Hello, my name is Craig Ross, and today we're going to talk about a topic that I love, e-commerce. Specifically, we're going to look at an external platform and how it allows you to extend your brand throughout the customer's entire shopping experience, engage your customers with a platform's fantastic marketing and social media tools, manage your B2C, B2B, mobile, Amazon orders, subscriptions, quotes, even point of sale transactions all in one place. If you hear the term um, these days, omni-channel, that's what it's referring to. And finally, to exchange your data with other systems. If you are using you know, automated warehouse management system or an ERP or accounting software, data can flow automatically. So let's take a look. We're gonna begin at our first fairway demo, which is a fictitious golf brand. I should mention that I'm gonna be moving very fast since I've got a lot that I'm really excited to share with you, but please feel free to ask questions in the webinar interface. We'll have time at the end to go through them. So let's get started. For all practical purposes, right now we could be on your website. We're not in an external platform yet. We hope that you have a really good website that does a really nice job of articulating your brand and your brand's promise to your customers and makes them feel comfortable and, and you know basically tells them who you are and what you're all about and basically makes it easy for them to start shopping. From an easy to start shopping perspective, what we use this to demonstrate is that you can send your customers from your website into your next external store just about any way you want. For example, you can take customers right into a specific, right into a storefront, which is super popular and common. You can take customers right into categories in your store, right into products in your store, right into search results in your store. And if you do B2B sales, um, you can have something like a dealer login or wholesale login to bring your customers right to um, your B2B. So a single and external instance and platform can do both B2B and B2C sales. B2B, of course, is becoming um, truly really the next frontier, if you will, from an e-commerce perspective, and that's been baked into an external from day one. But from argument's sake right now, let's assume I've come to your website and I want to um, shop for accessories. So once I do, now I'm brought to your next external store. So everything we're gonna look at from this point forward is indeed an external platform. Now something very remarkable has happened at this point, or perhaps it's not at all remarkable depending on your perspective, but as a customer, I've gone to your website and I had the experience of shopping at your website. So all of the branding and navigational elements of your website get carried across and brought into an external intact. So your customers have the experience of engaging with your brand and shopping with your brand all the way through their online experience. Think about a lot of times where, when you go shopping online, you go to somebody's website, and then once you click on, you know, that you wanna go into the store, you're clearly brought someplace else into something that looks like a template, and it looks disjointed from the website you've come from. Your customers don't have that experience with Nextternal. With Nextternal, they're going to your website, they're buying from you. And we'll take care of this for you in what we call our site sync process, in which we basically take the code from your website and implement it into Nextternal, and that's how we can ensure that somebody indeed has a coherent shopping experience. Now, I've come here, maybe I wanna buy a British Open towel, I can even see it's on sale, which is great. And then on this page, of course, I click Add to Cart. And I can see that fly right into my always on screen shopping cart. Now, while I'm here, I need some teas as well. So let's get that. So now I have two products in my cart, and I've done that with only two clicks. As a customer, I never have to click View Cart. I can always see exactly what I'm buying. I never have to click continue shopping like you have to with just about every other system I've ever seen. And I never have to click recalculate if I wanna buy multiples of a product. So because of that, this shopping experience is just as simple and as fast as possible. And if it's simple and fast, your customers are that much more likely to complete their transactions. Many of our clients using Nextternal come to us after already using some other e-commerce platform and they get to the point where they recognize that their conversion rates are not what they should be because the shopping experience is really clunky and slow for customers. This is a huge and important way to combat that. 
And you know, think about the last time you bought something um, for yourself online. Who knows, maybe it was only a few minutes ago. You know, you probably added something to the cart. There's a good chance the system you were on made the entire screen the shopping cart. Then you had to click continue shopping. And then depending on the system and depending on what else you needed to buy, you know, you had some type of navigation that you had to go through to find that second product. This all goes away with this platform. So just really clean and really, really simple. Now, it's also really great about having an always on screen shopping cart is it gives you as a marketer a wonderful marketing opportunity. For example, you can have dynamic cart messaging like we have here. Now, one promotion that's pretty popular, popular these days is to tell customers, hey, if you spend enough money, um, you'll get, for example, free ground shipping. And you know, lots of people do that, but what you can do in external is as they get close to that point, then you can dynamically alert them to push them over. So in this case, wait, I'm $30 and one cent away from free shipping. Of course I want free shipping. And you know what, my wife's probably gonna take my towel anyway, so I might as well get another one. So once I do that, again, I don't have to click recalculate or view card or any of that. I now have two, I've now hit that threshold for free shipping and so that messaging goes away. So it's really simple for customers to shop and it gives you a really wonderful marketing opportunity simply by having an always on screen cart. So that's the first thing really to point out about the platform is just the, the ease of use for your customers and for you for that matter. Now let's look at some products that are maybe a little more interesting than a towel. I like looking at this Nike Sphere Dry Polo because this product gives me lots to talk about. Before we even talk about the product itself, I wanna talk about search engine optimization for a moment. So the URLs in your external store, they are as clean and as simple as they can possibly be. There's no extraneous junk in them that Google doesn't like. So these URLs are built specifically to be friendly to Google and to the other search engines that exist. Of course, Google's the big one by far. Now, two things to know. One, it's simply the name of your store on your domain and the name of the product, plus an identifier. An identifier is a slick little trick that we employ to protect yourself, which we can get into if we need to. And that's it. Plus it can be HTTPS secure the entire time. Google's using HTTPS security as a ranking signal. So all things being equal, if your pages are secure and somebody else's aren't, you're gonna outrank them. And so uh, again, really clean, really simple URLs native to the platform. Second thing I want to talk about is the URLs, the, the title tags in your store can be completely customizable. So a lot of people have a title tag, what's that? I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what that is. And that's fine. Uh, in fact, most people don't know what they are. Most people don't need to know what they are. But title tags are what shows up here in the tab that I'm on. And those tabs, or really the title tags within those tabs, are important because they tell Google what the page is about. Uh, many search engine optimization, search, you know, SEO professionals believe that title tags are the most important, what they'll call on-screen factor. And so you can completely customize these title tags to be whatever you want them to be. And so by and so you think, well, why would I want to do that? Or what's the importance of that? Well, let's take this shirt, for example. As a customer, I might not know it's called the Nike Sphere Dry Polo. I mean, that would be the obvious title tag would be just the name of the product. But I might not know it's called that. I might know it's called the Nike um, golf shirt worn by Tiger Woods. And so you can make your title tags match, not necessarily what the product's called, but what somebody would type in to Google if they were looking for that product. And if you do that, you're gonna rank much, much better um, for those types of search terms. So that type of thing is really simple to do in the platform. So search engine optimization is something we take very seriously because it's of critical importance to our clients and, and those tools are built right in. And this is just two examples of that. Turning our attention to the product itself. Products can have attributes, um, which you would expect. Something like shirts come in different sizes and different colors. So that's pretty straightforward. It's really simple to have a, an image gallery like you see here. And you don't need to know any programming to do this. You, you're just filling in blanks. Now let's assume I want a royal um, blue shirt instead of black. Well, when I click on it here, of course, I see royal blue. Everybody understands that. But the system will also change the color selection for me. The attribute and the, color and the swatch gallery are tied together. 
And so you're probably thinking, well, of course they are. It would be crazy for them not to be. But think about the last time you bought clothing online. You probably had an experience just like this, but you also had to make the selection here to match what you were looking at here. Now think about if you're somebody like my mom, for example, who's not necessarily paying attention to all this, she's gonna get the wrong product because she's gonna pick Royal here, but it's not gonna be reflected here, and then therefore a black one's gonna show up. And she's gonna think, I know I picked Royal, and she did, but she just didn't pick it where the system expected. So all of those types of concerns go right out the window with Nextjournal. As you can see, they're tied together. It's really geared towards simplicity. So attributes and attribute selection, really simple, baked right in. Now talking about some things that might be even a little more interesting than that, you can have multiple ship tos in the platform, and this can be a key differentiator of an external platform. So if you sell products that are, for example, given as gifts around the holidays, or you do any sort of B2B sales, you know, your B2B customers probably don't have one location, they probably have many. So don't make them come to your store and place three separate orders. Let them come to your store and place a single order and pick which products go to which location. That's baked right into the platform. So multiple ship twos, fully, fully embedded and baked in. If your business is such where people can order online and pick up like in a retail location or in a, at a trade show or some type of event, um, what people in the industry like to call click and collect, um, that's baked in as well. If you don't do that, hey, we're simply online, this, op this option simply wanna be there. So these type of tools are all things that you can turn on or off, and they're really the start of, of this omni-channel concept that I mentioned a moment ago. Below our Add to Cart area, we have our social media um, action block, if you will. This is an awesome section, because it gives your customers the ability to, in a sense, communicate on your behalf. Um, a lot of things are here that you would expect. For example, tell a friend is here. If I'm buying something for my house, I probably want to tell my wife about it and make sure she's on board. Um, so that's really easy for me as a customer. Twitter integrations here, Google Plus integrations here, Pinterest is here. You know, Pinterest is really the master wish list, if you will, of the internet. So that's a great tool for you to have. So these are all here. Now, the one that I really like is what we call Facebook Share and Save. Now, when I mention that, people's instant reaction is, well, okay, everybody's got Facebook like buttons or Facebook share buttons. You know, what are you talking about? Well, in our case, you can incentivize your customers to share your product. In this case, share this product and receive a $2 sharing discount. So if I'm your customer and I see that, well, why wouldn't I share the product in that case? Um, you know, now, now I'm, you've incentivized me, now I'm getting a discount on it, and therefore I'm that much more likely to buy this product. And now all of my friends on Facebook see that I've shared this product. So by simply turning on this tool and, and putting an appropriate discount, sharing discount, you can build a tremendous amount of backlinks from Facebook right to your store. This is a very powerful tool. Our clients have had tremendous success with it, as you can probably imagine. And as far as I know, nobody's copied us on this yet. So it's a tool that we're obviously proud of, but more importantly, it's very, very effective. It's a very effective marketing tool for our clients. And again, baked right into the system. Below our social media area, we've got our product content. Most of our clients like to have a tab display like this because um, it's real simple for customers to find what they're looking for. If for whatever reason you don't want tabs, your content can just stack, just like it does at Amazon, for example. Now, what I want you to see, for example, in this description tab, is you can put in as little or as much content as you want. But what's really great about it is that it's fully HTML formatable. So you can do things like embedding video really simply. Video is a tremendous sales tool. So if you have any sort of videos of your products, commercials, testimonials, installation videos, you name it, you can embed them right in your store. And so your store becomes, of course, a store, but also you can become an educational resource for your customers. And if they're at your store being educated on your products via your videos, well, now I'm that much more likely to buy because I'm right here in the store. So that type of thing is really, really simple. Reviews are built right into the platform. It's not like you have to go out and buy a different review or separate review engine or anything like that. Now, customer reviews are really important for two reasons. 
One is obvious, you know, products that are well-reviewed convert better. Everybody understands that. People go to Amazon just to read reviews, et cetera. Everybody gets that. But the other place where reviews can be really powerful is that reviews are what Google calls a social signal. And so these reviews can help you with your search engine listings. So not only do we have the review data, the review data is presented to Google um, using a specific type of coding called a rich snippet so that Google not only has this content, but it has the content in the specific format that it's looking for. And so all things being equal, you know, you versus a competitor, your products are reviewed and using this technology for somebody who's aren't, you're gonna rank better. In fact, if you've gone to Google lately and looked for products, you might have noticed the first and or second listing have stars next to them when all the other ones don't. That's this, so it can be very powerful. So definitely take advantage of reviews. It can help you across the board. Customer questions are also built into the platform, if appropriate. So you can have FAQs on the products in your store. And FAQs work very similar to how reviews work in the sense that one, it's great from a customer experience perspective because if they have a question, they can ask it right here. So it's a good customer service, a good experience for them. And two, if it's a good question, you can display it and the response for all of your other customers to read, you know, just like FAQs work. And so it's great from a customer perspective, but also by your customers asking you questions and you answering them, you're now constantly providing fresh content on your pages for Google to index. Google likes fresh content. So it helps you from a customer perspective, also helps you from a search engine perspective. So uh, reviews baked right in. We also have express ordering that I wanna point out. So express ordering is great, especially if you sell, if you're in the B2B world. A lot of our B2C clients don't really need this, but B2B customers love this because it allows them to sell complicated products like this very simply in bulk. So let's take the, this shirt example. And let's assume I'm buying one or two of them for myself. Well, this is the type of experience I expect. But let's assume I need to buy a thousand for the company. I probably want something more like this, where I just specify the amount I need for which different size color combinations I'm looking for. And I can add them all to the cart with a single click. So if you do any sort of B2B type sales with what I'll call configurable products like this, Express ordering can be tremendous. So that's also built right into the platform. If it doesn't apply for you, just uncheck it. And then finally, if you have content that doesn't fit neatly into one of our predefined tabs, no problem, just make your own. Um, call it whatever you want and put in whatever content you need. For example, in this case, we have a sizing chart, um, as you can see. So that type of thing is also really simple. So it's very simple for you to have very robust product listings, which do a great job of articulating whatever information you need to your customers and entices them to buy. Again, no program required to do any of this type of stuff. Finally, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see we have um, related products. In this case, labeled, might we also suggest. So any sort of cross-selling and upselling um, that you wanna do and need to do, that's also really simple in the platform. And this is actually a topic we're gonna revisit in a moment or two. Two other things I wanna show you first, though. If we click on clubs, we have subcategories here. Everybody does that these days. Subcategory is really not that interesting. It's just really simple on a platform to put in whatever type of categorization structure you need or what um, you know some e-commerce types will call taxonomy. So it's just really easy for you to have whatever structure for customers to find what they're looking for. Having said that, what I want you to see is that every category in external has a description, what we call a description field, that you can use to articulate whatever type of marketing content you want. So for example, I click on clubs, now I see that First Fairway has these Titleist irons in stock. Well, I didn't even think anybody had them yet. I didn't think they were out yet. So instead of me not even looking for this product, First Fairway is proactively pushing me towards them. So any sort of in category marketing you need to do as far as you know pushing your customers towards a specific behavior or certain edu you know certain things you want to educate them on that's really really simple in the platform and that can be a tremendous marketing tool you know everybody when they sell online they always think about i've got my products and how do i categorize my products but the best marketers think about 
well, now somebody's in my store and they're in clubs, for example. Well, what do I want them to do or what do I want them to see or how do I want to nudge them? And that type of marketing is very, very simple. Final category I want to look at are golf balls. Now, within the golf balls, I like these Callaway, um, these Callaway HX balls. And why I like coming here is not that I can buy them like you would expect and you can but you'll see that I can subscribe to these products. And so in this case, I can subscribe and First Fairway is gonna send me, gonna auto create a new order for me, in this case, every six months. And by doing so, I get a discount. Or maybe I don't, you know, maybe my game's getting better. I'm not losing them as much. So I can subscribe and have them sent to me every three months. Um, so subscriptions are baked right into the platform. If you sell any type of products that are consumables, um, you name it, you know, it's the type of thing that people would want on a recurring basis. You can allow your customers to, to subscribe to them. Customers love it because they don't have to worry about running out. They always have the product arriving when they need it. And, mar and merchants love this because they build recurring revenue streams right into their e-commerce platform. So this is baked right in and it's fully featured. It will generate a new order at the appropriate interval, not just try to, for example, hit somebody's credit card. And so um, it's generating full order so that you can fully process the order and gives you all the tools that you need to do so. So subscriptions baked right into the platform. Like I said, if you sell consumable products, this is awesome. Definitely take advantage of it. So those are the props I wanted to show you. Now let's assume we've come here, you know, we came for a British Open towel, of course, now we're buying two and some teas. Let's check out. And then once we do, now we get what's called the related product upsell overlay. Now that's a lot of words for a really simple concept. Based off of the products I have in my cart, the system's gonna suggest other products to me um, based off of those product relationships. And what's so smart about this is that, you know what, these golf balls, they are on sale. I guess I will get them. I add them to the cart right here. I don't get taken out of my checkout funnel. I don't have to navigate out of here into a product detail screen. So it allows me to add to my order without distracting me from actually buying. Very much the same concept as the gum in the checkout aisle at the grocery store. So now that we're, we've definitely bought more than we've come here for, um, let's check out. I'm gonna log in as a returning customer to save me a little typing. And the system's gonna welcome, we're gonna recognize me and welcome us and bring me right to my invoice page. Now at this point, a um, couple of things of interest. Number one, you know, we qualified for, in this case, free ground shipping, so we're happy. But if we wanted to upgrade a second day or next day air, we have those options. Now, Nextjournal, it might not be apparent to you based off of what you're seeing here, but Nextjournal is integrated with the shipping carriers like UPS and FedEx and the Postal Service. So these are real-time rates. So instead of having to build your own rate structure, you can indeed show real-time rates in the system. And you can even build handling fees and stuff into them, which would not be apparent to your customers. Um, so that type of thing is really simple. Plus, you can do like hybrid approaches if you want, where like, for example, we're going to use real-time rates and unless you spend enough money, then it'll be free. Or we want to use real-time rates in some cases, but our own rates in other cases. You can do just about anything you can imagine. The system does allow for preferred delivery dates. So most of our clients who just sell, you know, products that are manufactured, they don't use this because they just ship the product as soon as they get the order. But if you sell things like perishable products, for example, um, this can be tremendous, or products that are given as, for example, birthday gifts or things of that nature, where the customer wants the product to arrive on a specific day, that capability is built in. Again, if you don't need it, you simply wouldn't elect to use that option. Coupons, gift certificates are all built in. Um, in this case, of course, we're gonna put on a credit card. Um, if I wanna give you any comments and special instructions, I can. If you as a merchant don't want comments and special instructions, again, it's just a selection, that option wouldn't be there for your customers. And then finally, um, we have a legal disclaimer here, field at the bottom, which can even have an I agree checkbox. So if you have a scenario where 
depending on what you sell, customers need to agree to specific terms. Like you're selling software. And I understand once I open the box, I can't return it. Or you're selling wine where, hey, I agree that somebody who's at least 21 will be available to sign for the package when the when UPS or FedEx brings it. Um, that capability is also baked right in. So let's assume we're all set and let's submit our order. And then once we do, the system's gonna thank us. And at this point, it's gonna send us an order confirmation email automatically. Thank you for your order. You know, this is what you bought. Click on this link to see the status of your order. So your customers will always know what's going on with their order. And you know, we, even today, all of us have been in the scenario, in the situation where you go online, you buy something, you hit submit order, and then it seems like nothing happens. You never get a confirmation that the merchant got the order. You don't know when they're gonna ship it. You don't know if they ever shipped it, et cetera. With an external, your customer will always know their order status. So that's the shopping experience. It took me a lot longer to talk about it than it does for a customer to just go to your store and buy what they want. But the whole idea is that they're going to your website and they're buying from you and that it's robust and that you can have whatever type of content experience you need in there. And it's really simple for your customers. They can buy from you with the minimal amount of clicks necessary. So that's the shopping experience. Now, I bet some of you are thinking, hey, that's really clean. I love it. I, I totally get it. I love it. But what happens when somebody's not at their computer? You know, people like to shop on their phones these days. You know, what does it look like in that case? Well, let's go to my phone. So mobile is fully baked right into the external platform. And so here's the store on my phone, same golf apparel category we looked at a moment ago. And we can look at that same Nike Sphere Dry Polo we looked at a moment ago. Now, even though I'm on a phone, everything's here. My attribute selections here, multiple ship dues, am I picking it up? My social media tools are here, complete with Facebook share and save. My content's all here, including a video, my custom sizing charts here. You name it, it's gonna be here awesome. So regardless of the device your, your customers are on, they're gonna have the best possible shopping experience. And the one thing that Nextjournal does exceptionally well is we have what we call cart keeper technology and what the industry is starting to call the Netflix effect. So if you think about Netflix, like think about you're, you're, I don't know, on an airplane, on a train, let's say, and you start watching a show or a movie on your phone, and then when you get home, if you turn on Netflix on your TV, Netflix will know where you left off on that movie. Well, this does the same thing. So as a customer, if I'm logged in, I can start shopping, putting things in my cart, uh, but maybe I don't finish my order later in the day or next week even, I go to my computer and I go to your store, all my cart contents will be waiting for me and then I can submit my order. Especially in B2B, that type of experience happens a lot where somebody will start their shopping experience on one device and finish on another. But in the consumer world, that happens as well. People tend to get, for example, promotional emails, so they'll start shopping on their phones, but then they'll rely on their computers to actually place their order. And so this makes it really, really simple for them. So that's mobile, baked right in. You effectively don't need to do anything. The system takes care of it for you. So that's the shopping experience. Phone, computer, both at the same time, basically. System does it all beautifully. So let's switch gears entirely now and become the merchant. So everything we're gonna look at from this point forward is the back end of Nextjournal, what we call the order management system. And the order management system is where you as a merchant will log in to run, manage, and grow your online business. Now I should mention that everybody in your organization who would have access to your order management system would have their own user profile. There's seven different access levels so you can control who can do and see what within the system. And if I could type properly, then we could see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is now the back end, the order management system. Again, your customers would never see any of this. This is for you, the merchant. This is where you run your online business. Now, one thing that's really great about everybody having their own 
log into the order management system, besides the obvious security benefits, are that they get to pick where they want to start. I like starting at the dashboard because it lets me see at a glance, am I on track for my revenue? You know, am I on track and how am I doing? So I can see things like, you know, my progress gauge, am I on track? How are my sales charting over time? Um, how am I doing on Amazon? Amazon's integrated as well, something I alluded to before and we'll talk about in a few minutes. Best products, best customers, you know, everything's here. Or there's perhaps that's even more interesting would be something like this in the US sales map. You know, I might think I'm a marketing genius. And so I have a, I have a marketing promotion. I put together an email, I send it out, people buy from me. Hey, everything's great. Until I look at this and see, well, you know what, maybe not. For whatever reason, my marketing is not resonating in pretty much the entire middle of the country. Well, why is that? What am I, what am I missing or what am I doing wrong? I can see I've got to make some corrections. Without something like this, yeah, ultimately I might figure it out. If I really pour over sales data, I, you know, I'd have to really dive into sales data to figure it out. Or I can see in a fraction of a second I've got an issue I need to address. That's why I like the dashboard. The other area I really like are my search analysis um, right at the bottom. What are people searching for within my store? Are they coming to my store and looking for products I don't have? Or are they looking for products that I've been thinking about bringing online, but I'm just not sure if I have demand? This might help me see it. Uh, we have a bunch of examples of clients of ours who, by looking at their search data, they recognize they have demand for a product that they hadn't considered selling online. Like maybe they sold it in a retail store, but not like a retail gift certificate. Well, who would buy that online? Well, they come here and they see, look, that's what people are, one of the top things people are looking for. Now we are going to sell those gift certificates, and now they just have it's just a huge new revenue stream. And so this can be really powerful. Again, it's easy, but it can give you real good insights into what's going on in your business and if there's any adjustments you need to make. So that's the dashboard. Before we move on to orders, one other thing I want to show you is so let's go back to my phone for a moment. On my phone, you'll see we have a free app for in the Apple iOS marketplace called Dashboard Plus. So this gives me access to a lot of that same dashboard data, but on my phone. So I can be wherever and I can see what's going on with my business. What's really great about this is it gives me some actionable intelligence as well. For example, at the top of the screen, I can see that I've received 42 orders for the day. I can see the revenue associated with those orders. Hey, day's off to a pretty nice start. But if I look down on, you know, down on a lower tile, I see that I have 43 unfilled orders. Well, that makes sense since 42 just came in, but two of them are back order. Well, why is that? I shouldn't have any back orders. So I can click on any of those tiles and they're gonna rotate and give me a lot more information. So in this case, I can see, uh, here's back order, and in this case, it's for these horrible golf shorts. I thought, you know, I thought we had lots of them in stock and I didn't think people bought them, but clearly I was wrong. Um, we're now out. So now I can call Ashworth and order some more, even though I'm not at my office, even though I'm not, you know, quote, working, I can see I have a problem and I can address it quickly. So Dashboard Plus gives me all sorts of great information at my fingertips, no matter where I am. The other thing it'll do for you, assuming you wanted to, is it'll give you push notifications every time you receive an order. Uh, it's funny, I still, I talk to clients all the time and I can hear their their, their phone in the background um, making this cha-ching noise um, for every order they receive online. They love, they love to be at dinner doing whatever and have their phone constantly giving them notifications because they know they're making money. So uh, that's even built in. So Dashboard Plus, it's absolutely free. As you can imagine, our clients love it. So coming back into the order management system itself, let's talk about orders for a moment. Orders, of course, are the, the reason that we're here. Um, any order that's received will show up here automatically. So whether it's an order placed online, like what we did, whether it's a um, B2B, B2C, it's here, mobile, it's here, something like Amazon orders, you can see a couple of Amazon orders in here, they can flow in automatically. So you have one consolidated resource for all of your orders. Now, a big advantage of having all of your orders flow here is that it makes it really simple for you to process your orders. 
Now there's several different methods for processing your orders depending on what makes the most sense for your business. So let's uh, let's first talk about processing an order individually so you understand what the system's doing and then we'll take it from there with your other options. So if I wanted to process this order, I would simply click on this order number and this screen gives me all the information I need. Where, what did this customer buy? How are they paying for it? And where is it going? Now, um, first thing you'll probably notice is that the credit card is authorized when the order is placed. And that happens by an external talking to your merchant account via what's called a gateway provider. And a gateway provider is basically just a piece of software which will link the two systems together. Now that I'm basically ready to ship, I'm allowed to capture the funds. And the way I do that is by clicking on this dollar sign icon. It's going to show me that PayFlow will now process. But if you use authorize.net or Chase Payment Tech, the process is identical. And then in my credit card terminal, the system will show me I have indeed successfully captured the funds. So I'm all set. What's really great about this terminal window is if there's any ever any sort of customer service issue, um, I can deal with it right here. Maybe I need to void this transaction or issue a refund in the future, even do a new authorization for some reason. I can do so right here in a consolidated interface. I don't have to log into authorize.net to do it, for example. So now that we've gotten paid, let's assume that we want to ship. If I scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see that I can create a packing slip if I need to. I can even generate an invoice if appropriate. But most importantly, for argument's sake right now, I can create shipping labels right from here. So in this case, it's going to show me that UPS is available. If I ship with FedEx or the Postal Service, the process is basically identical, and even what's called GSO um, for our friends in California who ship wine, for example. And then once I hit Create, UPS is going to reply to us. And you will see our shipping label right here. Print it out, stick it on the package. It even has a packing slip built into it. I'm all set. So once I put that on the box, I hit finish, I can see my orders automatically change to shipped. Tracking information is automatically here. I'm all set. So just really clean, really simple. Tracking information is even entered on the line item level so that if you have a scenario where not everything goes in one box or ships at the same time, the system can handle that beautifully. You would probably think, oh, of course, but a lot of systems really can't. So that's how you process an order. Now you're probably thinking, okay, that's really simple. It's basically two clicks. But Craig, I don't have an order to process right now. I've got 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000, you name it. I don't want to go into each one individually like that. And of course, you're right. You don't want to go into each one individually. In that case, you're going to click on the batch process button. And batch processing does just what you think it does. It allows you to do all of your orders, in this case, with basically two clicks. We'll do all of the fulfillment, all your shipping label creation, and all of your credit card processing. So you can literally do thousands of orders in just a few minutes in external. A lot of times people come to us because they've been using whatever system previously, and they have a person or two people who spend all day simply processing orders because everything is really slow and cumbersome and manual, and they can't believe that this cuts that whole process down to just a few minutes, but it does. So that's batch processing. Now, as simple as that is, some of you are clearly thinking, well, Craig, that's great, but I don't process my orders this way. I've got an ERP system, and all my order processing happens out of that. Um, and if some of you on this call are not familiar with the term ERP, basically it's a glorified term for, for fancy accounting software. And so in that case, what happens is your orders will flow out of an external and into your ERP automatically via TrueCommerce Transaction Manager. An external is part of TrueCommerce, so that automated data flow is something that we offer as well. And then you process your orders just like you do today and then your tracking information will flow back to an external automatically, which would automatically update the orders, which in turn automatically sends ship confirmation emails to your customers. So whether you want to process an order individually in external, in batch in external, or outside of an external, we provide the tools um, to make that simple no matter how you do it. Um, so again, those tools are all included, or all, you know, all part of an external and true commerce, 
no matter how you want to do it, we've got the tools to make it easy for you. So that's processing orders. Now, the other thing I want to show you while we're in the, there's a few other things I want to show you in the order section. Um, it's worth knowing that it's really simple to get order information. A lot of times, you know, salespeople and marketing people, hey, I need to get order reports. Yeah, my accounting team can get that for me. But by the time they do, it's, it's you know, my meeting's over. I need this stuff now. Well, they can always come in here and get whatever data they want, basically, at any time. So a wealth of reporting is built in the system. There's also reports on the product level, customer level, vendor level, affiliate level. So a wealth of reporting is baked right into the system. So that's worth knowing. You can always export your order information at an external as well. Some of our clients like to, you know, I've got my own data that I need to pull up. And I like to write pivot tables or what have you in Excel. Well, great, I can come in here and export orders into Excel or Access anytime I want. So not only do we have all this order information, it's yours, and therefore we make it very portable for you. The final thing I want to show you from an order perspective is a lot of times we talk to people like, hey, you know what? I still have a lot of customers who call me on the phone. And yes, I want to push them towards ordering online themselves, but I need a better mechanism for capturing phone orders also. So in that case, it's baked right in. So your customer service team would have your external order management system open. And let's assume I called them and said I wanted to buy a British Open towel. They click on the new button, and that brings them to the internal store. Now, the internal store you'll see it looks very similar to a customer facing store. And so it's really simple for your customer service team to use. In fact, if your customer service team can go to Amazon and buy something for themselves, they can use this tool to take phone orders for your customers. So for example, like I said, I called up and I want to buy a British Open towel. The customer service agent would add the British Open towel to the cart for me. And then you'll see that we can even have these internal memos. Hey, Get, hey, we have a promotion on umbrellas. Would you like one also? Um, no, thank you. I'm all set with umbrellas. I just need a towel. Okay, well, we'll check out. And we, then we can leverage this overlay, just like we did in the customer-facing store. Well, sir, we are having a, a big discount on the case pack of tees. You must play golf a lot since you like the towel. Um, you know, would you need some tees as well? Yeah, I guess I could take that. And then you'll see by the by default, the system assumes it's a phone order. Have you bought with us in the past, sir? Yes, I have. My last name's Ross, and my first name's Craig. So it's real simple for your team to look up returning customers. And then, of course, you get my credit card information. Um, yes, I would like, even though it's a phone order, I would like you to send me a, a order confirmation email. And that's it. So it's really simple for your team to take phone orders as well. Um, in fact, when we're done, if for whatever reason you need a back issue or a special issue of USA Today, <clears throat> if you call them, this is exactly how they'll take that order. You know, they've got a huge call center and all their agents are logged into their next external system taking phone orders. And now that we're back to the orders section, you'll see there's two Craig Ross orders, the one we did online, the one we did on the phone. The system indeed knows it's the same Craig Ross. So it's just, again, really clean and really simple. So that's orders. Now, before we move out of orders or move on to, to products, there's one other thing I want to talk to you about from an order perspective. <clears throat> so one thing that comes up um, quite often, it seems like this day and age, is, hey, you know what? I take orders also in person. You know, I've got a, either like a retail store or I take orders at trade shows, or I have my sales reps, they go out and they call on people. You know, they go into their locations and they need to take orders that way. Do you have a tool for us? Yes, we do. It's called True Commerce Engage. It runs on iPads, which you can see my iPad on the screen right now. And this is great because it allows me to take orders in person. And this system has what the industry is calling client telling tools built right into it. So, for example, let's assume somebody, let's assume your sales rep is using this tool and they're coming to my office. Before they even walk in, they can look up my customer record. 
Here I am. So even before they walk in the door, they can see how long I've been a customer. They can see the lifetime value. They can see how many times I've bought from you. They can see what I like to buy, et cetera. So let's assume your rep comes in. Hey, Craig, you know, we have a special on British Open Towels. How many can I put you down for? You know, I can, uh, you know, I need, uh, I don't know, let's say six of them. Easily add that to the cart. And then, you know, we can easily check out. And in this case, for argument's sake, let's just assume I'm going to give you a check. Um, and this is really fast for your customer service people, or really in this case, your sales reps, or people, customer service at a trade show, et cetera, to, um, to take orders in person. So really, regardless of the way that you need to interact with your customers, those tools are all here. They're all baked right into the platform. And now when we go back to the order section, now of course we have a third order, in which case I, the one that I just picked up from your custom, you know, from your sales rep. Now the final thing to mention about the Engage app is that it pulls all of its content from your external system. So you can just spin them up as you need to. It's not like you have to do any sort of configuration on each individual iPad you have. You just you know basically add that license and then you're off to you're off to sell. So that type of thing is really, really simple. So again, no matter how you need to take orders for your, from your customers, we give you the tools to make it easy. Now, of course, to take orders from customers, you need to have products in your system. So let's talk about that quickly. Now, any, um, any product that you have, of course, will live here. Now, let's, let's take this example of our British Open Towel that we keep coming back to. Um, you know, it was on sale, as we know. Let's assume the sales sales over. So to, to, to edit this product, all I have to do is click on this pencil icon, which is my edit button. And then I'm simply going to scroll down to where I have our product pricing. And in this case, I'm going to get rid of that discount. And then I hit finish. And that's it. Product is no longer on sale. Anybody going to the store sees the full price now. So any sort of changes you need to make or additions or you need to add products, you just log into the system, you do what you need to do, and you get on with your day. You don't need to get IT involved. You don't need to call somebody. You don't need to upload something and wait for something to happen. As long as you have an internet connection, you can log in and do what you need to do. So let's take that concept a step further. Let's assume I have a brand new product to sell. All I have to do is click the new button, and then this screen's gonna look just like what we saw, except everything's blank because we haven't added any content yet. So all you do is fill in the blanks. What's the name of the product? What SKU number do you have? How's it categorized? Can everybody buy it or just some people? What kind of content do you have around descriptions? Does it have attributes like sizes and colors or things like that? How much does it cost to different customers? Maybe have different pricing. How much does it weigh for shipping? Do you use inventory control? You upload some imagery in that section that we provide. And that's pretty much it. Once you put a product or two in the system, it's, it's just really intuitive and easy to use. Take you two, three minutes tops, and then again, you're on to the next thing. So adding products, very, very simple on the platform. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, okay, that's great, but I've got a thousand products I need to upload in the system. You know, I've got a thousand products to put in the system, um, and I've got them in a spreadsheet. You know, my data is good. I don't want to have to go through each one individually like that. You're right, you don't. In that case, you're going to click on the import button. And so we make it real simple for you to import all sorts of data in the system. Um, in this case, we're talking about a product import. And then simply how it works is, um, here's where you would right click on and download the template we provide. We provide templates for all the imports in the system. Our templates ensure everything maps correctly and ensures that there's no security problems. And then at the bottom of the screen, you just upload the template back in the system and you're on your way. So you literally can put thousands of products in the system in just a few minutes, assuming that your data is reasonably, reasonably clean and organized. So individually in batch, you can interact with the system again, however you need to, just like from an order perspective. Now, one other thing I wanna show you while we're in the product section 
is that there's this traffic tools area. And so here's where you can help drive additional traffic to your store. So we talked about you know, some search engine optimization um, when we were looking at the shirt, for example. But included in here is an automated data feed to Google product search as well. So Google product search, like when you go to Google, if you look for a product, there'll usually be like a, a listing or two um, typically paid for. And then below that will typically be images of the product. That's typically this. And so Google does charge a cost per click, but by simply turning on this tool, it's a great way to ensure that your products are well represented from a Google shopping perspective. Again, assuming your pr pricing competitive so that you don't get pushed off that page relative to other people who would otherwise be selling the same product. But this is a great tool to ensure that you have um, additional leverage, if you will, on Google search pages. And so this is a topic in and of itself, but we will automatically send your product information to Google product search automatically every night by simply turning on this tool. Um, so it's a great, great tool to take advantage of. Anybody selling B2C should be leveraging this. You know, Google, of course, is indeed that powerful. So really skipped over that, but Google product search and Google product listings can be fully automated by simply leveraging the tool baked right into the platform. Final thing I want to show you, or the final section I want to talk about while we have a few minutes left, is the customer section. So anybody who places an order in your store automatically added to your customer list. Now, the first thing to know is that you can segment your customers however you want to into different customer types. Within reason, you can have as many different types as you want. You can call them whatever you want. And different customer types can have different pricing. They can have completely different product visibility. So the products that I see might be very different than the products that, for example, you would see in the store. And we might have very different payment options. Maybe I have to put in a credit card, yet you are more of like a B2B type customer who's gonna be invoiced. You can control all of that very, very simply in the platform. With customers, the system will keep track of their entire purchase history. <clears throat> and you can even assign things like follow-up dates and owners to customers. So if you do like B2B, where you have sales reps who own your customer relationships, you can manage all of that in here. You can even track activities. Um, and, and all that type of stuff right in the platform. It'll keep track of all of it. Now, a big advantage of having all this customer information is that you can then leverage it from a marketing perspective. So for example, maybe I wanna find customers who used to buy from me all the time, but have stopped for some reason. And maybe I wanna try to get them back. Well, I can easily find them by clicking on this advanced search link. And what I'm describing is an order history search. And then in this case, I'm looking for customers who've ordered at least, let's say $1,000 from me, but who have not ordered in the past year. So if we go back to May 24th of 2017, these used to be good customers, used to spend a lot of money, haven't bought in a year for some reason. Now that I run my search, here's my formerly good customers. They all meet that criteria. Now that I know who they are, let's try to get them back. So I can click on the mail wizard. Mail wizard does probably what you think, allows me to send an email, a targeted email to them. And in this case, I just wanna send an email, not to everybody, which I can always do, but just to my order history search, i.e. my formerly good customers. System will confirm that it's just 11 people, not my entire customer list. And I can do a nice HTML email from someone client that's personalized. And so here's where I can put in whatever content I want. And the key is they've got a wealth of personalization terms. So I can say something like, um, dear first name, we want you back. Now, ideally, you have a much more articulate marketing message than this. But by putting in this personalization term, everybody is getting their own email sent to them that's personalized. So dear Danny, dear Daryl, dear John, and down the line. And so it's real simple to have personalized. You know these were your formerly good customers. You can give them a very targeted message to try to bring them back into the family, if you will. So these tools are again, are all baked right in. So that's just a real brief overview of the customer section. A lot of people ask about coupons, <clears throat> very robust couponing, if couponing is even a word, is baked right in. 
Um, there's a very sophisticated settings section that's easy to use, but it makes it real simple to configure the store like you need to. Built-in help desk, the layouts where we're gonna make the store match your website. Um, so this is a very easy to use, but a very robust and complete e-commerce platform. And so with that, especially since we are indeed running against the clock, I do wanna take at least two minutes for some questions. If you haven't asked a question, um, please do so in the interface and uh, let's see what we can do. Um, now, I first should mention that the interface is not great. So please ask and I'll do the best that I can to, um, uh, to get to it. Um, the question in here about interfacing to um, Dynamics GP. Um, the answer to that is yes. Um, Dynamics GP, just so people don't know, that's Microsoft Dynamics GP, which is a very sophisticated, or at least Microsoft, it's a Microsoft ERP system. Microsoft will tell you it's very sophisticated. And so yes, <clears throat> orders captured in external will flow into Dynamics GP by using True Commerce Transaction Manager. Um, the person asking this question, if you're already using True Commerce for, um, for EDI, for what's called EDI, and this is going to leverage that same pipeline you in a sense already have the integration just next journal is going to plug into it um, so absolutely yes in that case um, <clears throat> that uh, also looks like there's a follow-up question about like inventory um, so yes um, inventory information from ERPs assuming that inventory information is provided to transaction manager that will indeed update an external um, so uh, short answer is yes a uh, couple other questions real fast um how long does it take to get set up that of course is a question that i love um we typically like a month um and and there's really three or four things that happen within that month and these three or four things happen in parallel and that's what allows you to launch within that time the first is what we call a site sync that's where we're going to match the store to your website we basically take the source code of your website and implement it in the external we definitely like a month for that for scheduling reasons during that time, you will have an external account executive, account manager, account manager assigned to you. They will guide you through the onboarding process of getting your products in the system and for configuring the settings section. So those are areas two and three. You don't wait for the site sync. You do that while the site sync's happening. So you get your products in the system. The external will help you with any guidance you need. Same thing with your settings section. And then if you do need to integrate into your ERP or accounting, our colleagues on, the, on the, the transaction manager side of the house will do that. And that, they also like a month for that piece. So then you're up and running. So a month is a real good time frame. A real, real good, yeah, we, we like a month. If you absolutely have to rush, you can typically do it, but a month makes it real comfortable and manageable. And now let's just do one more real fast. Um, question about 301 redirects. Uh, assuming I understand that question, what I think that I think is being asked is, hey, what happens when I have a product, for example, like a seasonal product or <clears throat> last year's product that I don't have anymore? I don't want Google to have like a 404 page or a product cannot be found page or even a product listing that's no longer active. So, again, assuming I understand that is a really good, sophisticated question. If we go to products in external, if we go back to, for example, our British Open towel, and then if we go to the second screen, we can easily configure what happens when a product becomes unavailable. And so here's where we can do a 301 redirect to a new product, for example. So think about that this was like the British Open towel, 20, the 2018 model of the British Open towel. Well, pretty soon the 2019 model is gonna be available when the 2018 model runs out, we wanna have somebody who lands on that page automatically redirect to the 2019 page, and this is how you would do it. So, sorry to really blow through those questions. Looks like there's definitely some that we didn't get to, but at this point, I do indeed really hope that you enjoyed this demo as much as I did. If you're already working with an account executive at an external, please follow up with them with any questions you have, in particular the ones we didn't get to. If you're not currently working with somebody here, please don't hesitate to give me a call. I would look forward to talking with you. Thanks for joining us today.